The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Game Between the Blog Around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host of Between Two Minutes on Orient Neighbor Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighbor Television. A lot to talk about this week here. Obviously, we're going to preview the playoff matchups here um, affecting division from Divisions 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, of course, those, those are the um, where the OA schools are at. Um, we're going to also, um, there's, there's a um, change in coaching over at Farmington. Um, if you watch the news lately, I'm on the wake of that. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit here as well. I mean, like considering that what's that been going on. So, and also we're going to recap last week's week nine, um, week nine games. Also, um, some big wins, also some tough losses that kept teams out of the playoffs. Um, so let's go to our main story here. Of course, our main story is what happened at Farmington. Um, um, their whole coaching staff, Derek McDonald, no longer coaches Farmington. Um, you know, it's really bad over there. I mean, like, it was it was really bad. I mean, like, I'm not going to talk much into it because uh, it's already been reported in the news. I do have I do have it on my column at um, Saginaw 50 at blogspot.com. We want to look at the information surrounding what happened. Um, I mean, so when you look at Farmington's situation there for um, – questions going to be is who's going to be their head coach. I mean, they got a couple weeks till the start of basketball season, so really something to keep an eye on. As we um, look forward um, to the season starting up, um, so really a lot to really look at, um, you know. So it's something to really look at. Um, so now um, we're going to keep an eye on that situation there. Um, of course, there's going to be a new staff over at Farmington. Um, curious to see who takes over the job there. Um, something to really keep an eye on. Um, we're going to keep an eye around the OA and also um, the blog as well. And I'm sagging away for this 50 at blogspot.com on the latest information surrounding that situation over at Farmington. Um, let's go to football now. I mean, week nine, um, the week nine recaps, obviously. A couple of games we got to talk about, obviously, that has a lot of my attention. Um, I know a lot of people look at Lake Orion and Celine recapping that one, that that crazy game where Lake Orion won that one um, 35-28, it was a crazy, crazy game down there in Celine. Um, but there's some other games that really, I was really intrigued by that really had me like going like, what in the blue blazes happened there? Um, the first game that I, comes to mind for me is Troy and Frazier. Um, for Troy, if they won, you know they're going to be in the field. Um, they'd be in the playoffs. They'd be in the, in the field. Um, just saying is that, you know, when you look at the Colts, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like, um, but that game was a tight game. I mean, it was, you know, Troy ended up scoring a touchdown, took a, took a 19, 14 lead, couldn't get the two point conversion. Then Frazier goes down and scores, um, with virtually no time on the clock. Um, on a, on a, um, it was a really... It was a slant pass um, for a touchdown where Nolan Block got caught looking and then just couldn't come back in time. And the Frazier player just caught it and in the back end of the end zone, um, going by three Troy defenders for a touchdown. And that was your ball game. And it was 2019 in favor of um, Frazier over Troy in that one. So I asked myself that question. And I'm asking... What in the blue blazes happened to Troy? I mean, defensively, that team just, you know, defensively, it was just, it was, you know, I was surprised that they lo- how they lost to Frazier. Um, just really surprised how that game turned out. Um, just no words. No words to explain it. I mean, really, really wasn't no words to explain that game. Um, that game kept Troy out of the playoffs. Um Really, you know what I mean? So that's the situation there um, surrounding the Colts. Um, other games, you know, that had my interest, North Farmington, Bloopia Hills. Um, that game was 50-49 in favor of Bloopia Hills in triple overtime. Um, you know, Kieran Crosley played really well in that game for Bloopia Hills. I mean, like, I think he had the winning extra point 
Um, he played well at quarterback. Um, he's been there, Mr. Everything, all year for Bloomfield Hills. And you look at for North Farmington, um, you got to feel bad for, um, for Ryan Shelby. Um, obviously, with him um, just losing the, um, that game, um, you know, I feel bad for him. You know, I mean, like, he worked so hard to get back this season. Had a nice year for North Farmington. I mean, I think what really hurt them was the schedule. Um, really, really was the impact of that scenario. And, you know, when you look at that situation, how that unfolded, um, you know, for North Farmington, um, you know, it was unfortunate what happened with them. Um, with the Raiders this season, really unfortunate with everything that's gone on with them. Um, just, you know, there's no words, you know I mean? No words to explain what happened there. Um, coach, uh, it's, it's a tough loss to coach Sean Hurstein because it keeps the Raiders out of the postseason for a second straight year. And, you know, and I know a lot of people at North Farmington, you know, when they got that, when they got coach Hurstein and his staff, you know, the Harrison connection, you know, the, you know, you, you look at obviously the Harrison um footprint would be a perfect fit for North Farmington. I mean it's fit well early on, but it hasn't lately. And I think a lot of that has to do with the enrollment situation over at Farmington. And you know, it's unfortunate what's been going on, but it is what it is. So for North Farmington, um, second straight year they lost to Booby Hills. I mean, like you know, and it's something to really, really watch for um, going forward. And, you know, we'll see what happens going forward, North Farmington, um, you know, this offseason. So there's a lot to look at this offseason for them. Um, other games around the state, obviously, games around the league, obviously. Um, St. Clair Shores Lakeview, um, 49-10 to 10 over Berkeley. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I did not expect Berkeley to finish here 0-9. I mean, they just did not look good all season long. I mean, they really didn't. Um, so that's something for Coach Sean Shields to address this off season. Um, when you look at the Bears, um, obviously, um, this off season there's going to be a lot of questions going at it with Berkeley. Um, you know, I'm curious to see what Coach Sean Shields does this off season. I know he's had a lot of, a lot of issues, but you know, this off season, there's going to have to be some changes with that team over at Berkeley, um, really going forward there, um, surrounding them. Um, Garden City 40, Pontiac 6. Um, you know, I mean, like, I think obviously when you look at um, the season Pontiac's had, three wins this year, finish the year at 3-6. and six. That's the most wins they've had since 2011, which is a good sign for Coach Wendell Jefferson and his team. Um, they got um Kanye Donaldson coming back next year. Um, I think there is a direction for Pontiac. Um, and I think they're heading in the right direction. I think it's a good sign for them going forward. Um, obviously, you know, you look at, you know, the things that have been going on. Um, give credit where credit's due. Um, I think Pontiac, you know, I like the direction they're going. Um, and I think they're going to be a team that is going to be, they're going to be solid. So that's something to really watch for heading into next season for the Phoenix is, you know, we'll see what happens going forward there. And I, I think it'll be something to really watch. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens going forward there for Pontiac, um, you know, for the Phoenix. And I think it's something to really, really watch for going forward there. Um, Lampier 20, Royal Oak, nothing. Um, same as um same as Pontiac for Royal Oak. I think they got a vision. They got a direction. Um, they got an identity. Um, I really like where Royal Oak's at. Um, I, I think that the Ravens they're gonna be fine. Um, I I think honestly when you look at the Ravens, um, they've got some, you know, they've got some identity. I mean, they got an identity. They got a direction where they're going. Um, it's something to really watch for heading in the next season. Um, for Royal Oak, I mean, kind of, you know, you got a lot of upside for them. Um, a lot of excitement for them going forward. Um, 
So we'll see what happens with them. I mean, they had a nice year this year. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens going forward there. We already talked Troy. We already talked North Farmington already. Um, Troy, Utica 4, 21, Troy, Athens 13. Um, you know, when you look at this, for this season for, for Troy, Athens, it was not good. It really was not good. And I, I'm i curious to see how this offseason is going to be for Coach Tom Cook. Because now you have Vernon Burton in there as principal. And now you're going to have a situation to where you look at the Colts, situate, you look at the Red Sox, and, you know, it's a team that hasn't been in the playoffs since 2011. Uh, we're not counting the 2020 year, but really, when you look at Troy, um, Athens, a lot of questions next year for that program, especially now Vernon Burden now is the principal over there. Um, just it's going to be an interesting situation how that one's going to unfold with Troy Athens. Um, just something to really watch for going forward there in that situation. Um. West Bloomfield, 50, Oak Park, 6. Um, like I said, Oak Park, um, they had to win one of those games to get in the playoffs. Unfortunately for them, they didn't win either, and they're out of the playoffs. Um, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough sale for Oak Park going forward. Um, something to really watch for heading into next year is how is that program going to be next year? That's something to really watch for. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, we'll see. I mean, we will see. Um, and then Grove Seaholm, of course, that was the, one of the best games of the year. Um, Seaholm 21, Grove 14. Um, Seaholm's offensive line just dominated that game. Um, the Kinney brothers were solid. Um, of course, um, you know, Kyle Robbins had a nice game. Um, Jack Lewis had a nice game. I mean, <laughs> in all reality, when you look at it, um, it's kind of interesting to explain how that game's gone. Um, you know, we'll see, I mean, what happens there going forward there. And I think at the end of the day here, um, Troy Athens, um, I think at the end of the day here, Troy, Ath I mean, at the, at the end of the day here with Seaholm, um, you know, they're rolling right now at the right time. I'm hanging in the postseason. Um, and then on Groves' side, we're going to talk to them. For them, it's just, you know, I think they're fine, but they've really got to toughen up up front. And it, it doesn't feel, it feels unusual considering you have a, um, a D1 lineman and Avery Gock who really did not play well in that game. Um, and then, of course, you have both Hardy brothers scoring a touchdown early on to start that game. And then Seaholm just really dominated from here on out of that game. So, you know, so it's something to really adjust for for Coach Brennan Flaherty um, to really look at with Groves. Um, something to really watch. So, you know, we'll see what happens to them going forward there um, when it comes to the Falcons. Um, we'll see. I mean, that we will see. Um... Then let's go to the white Rochester 31, Wald Lake Northern 10. Um, good way for Rochester to close out the year against Wald Lake Northern. Um, they show, I mean, Jack Lauer had a nice game. Um, and he was dominant for them. Um, so when you look at Rochester, you know, a lot to look forward to heading into next year. So that's something to really watch for heading into next season for them. Um, Harper Woods, um, we already talked Boompy Hills and um I already talked Boompy Hills and um, North Farmington already. Um I already talked Rose Seaholm already. Um Salford Arson Tech 41 14 over Detroit Renaissance. Um good bounce back game for the Warriors. Isaiah Marshall had a bounce back game. Um You know, so when you really look at it here, I mean like it was kind of like a um it was a um it was a complete Domination by the Warriors in that game against the Phoenix. Um, so Safford Arts and Tech, they're going to be they're rolling the postseason with a ton of confidence going forward there. Something to really watch for there with A and T um, going forward there. 
Um, Harper Woods 24-7 over Roseville at at um, The game was played at Harper Woods because of a um, I guess of a threat at Roseville. Um, to what I've heard. Um, but Harper Woods showing that they're postseason ready. Um, with the way they played against a very good Roseville team. Um, Roseville, of course, let's not forget this is the same team that knocked off Romeo um, in the first round um, of the postseason. So, you know, in, the, in week two. So this is something to really watch for um, going forward there. Um, when you look at um, Harper Woods, is are they? I'm curious to see where they go. I'm curious to see what they do. Um, so it's something to really, really watch for with them. So, you know, and then... Obviously, in the red, you got to look at, of course, um, Stony Creek winning 24-23 over um, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay. Um, good game in that one um, for the Cougars. Um, you know, I mean, it was a good win for them to close out the year. Um, and second straight win against New Baltimore, Anchor Bay by one point. Um, last year, they knocked them out 21-20. Um, and then this year was 24-23 over Adam, New Baltimore. So, good win for Coach Nick Merlo to go out um, heading in the offseason with a lot of optimism. Your sub RC teams are really good. So, that's something to really watch for um, when you look at Stony Creek. So, something to really watch for as the um, as we look at with the Cougars um, heading into the offseason. So, really, really something to watch for when you look at Stony Creek heading into the offseason. Um, and then you have um, Oxford winning over... Um, 24-21 over, um, well, I forgot to mention Farmington and Utica for Thursday night. That was a 34-30 Utica win. That game got Utica in the playoffs. Farmington, you know, played better against Utica than they did against Lake Orion. Um, there's going to be some questions coming in the offseason with Coach Jason Albright and his Raider team. I mean, a lot of questions. Uh, and his Falcons. Um... Can't believe I said North Farmington on air, but um, when it when it with Jason Albright because I know he went to Farmington, but but anyway, there's a lot of questions for Farmington next year. I mean, they do lose a lot of talent, they do lose a lot of proven experience. Um, something to really watch for when you look at Stone, look at Farmington this off season. Um, just a lot of questions. So something to really watch for heading into the off season. So we'll see what happens there when it comes to Farmington. Um, Oxford 24, um, UD Jesuit 21, Luke Johnson, the story, Jake Katie kicking a winning field goal for Oxford. Um, basically, Elijah Dobson had a big touchdown for UAD, um, but it wasn't enough. Um, but for Oxford, getting in the playoffs, you know what I mean? Kind of like that similar storyline to 2021, but I still think that team from 2021 was a much better team than this year's team. Um, obviously, look at, of course, the schedule Oxford had to play back then. Now, yes, Oxford's played a tough schedule this year, but I just think that um, that 2021 team was a little bit more tougher. You know, when you look at, of course, they, they had an experienced quarterback and Brady Carpenter. Um, Jack Hendricks has played well for them this season. You got to prove it. You got you got an elite running back like you do with Luke Johnson. Um, wide receivers, a little bit question mark, but I know the Katie brothers have been playing well for them. Um, I mean, there is some traits to the 2021 team uh, over there at Oxford, and give credit where credit's due um, for them to win three games like that, starting off really one and five, and then turning it around, knocking off um, Stony Creek, then knocking off North Farmington. And then knocking off UD Jesuit, that is that says a lot about where the Wildcats have been. Um, obviously, being a young team, being a proven team, um, just a lot when you look at Oxford going forward there with them. So, a lot of upside looking at for Oxford going forward there for them. Um, Adams 38, Sterling Heights, Stevenson 13. Um, you know, when you look at this game, obviously Brady Priest scoring a big game. Ryan Waters has really started to improve as a quarterback. Um, he's been, he had, I think he had 174 yards rushing. He had 134 yards in the air. Um, just really, you know, you look at the situation, how that's been. Um, you know, so Ryan Waters has really picked up his game a little bit. Um, <laughs> so really... 
really good sign for Adams hanging in the postseason with the way Ryan Waters has really been playing for them going forward. Um, West Bloomfield won a 56 over Oak Park. We already talked about West Bloomfield a little bit here. Um, Raekwon Nance had a nice game. Um, stars from West Bloomfield showed out in that game against Oak Park. Um, so we're going to, I mean, they're rolling comfortably in the playoffs right now. Um, and then you have, um, and then there's Clarkson. Clarkson um, lost to Utica Eisenhower 36-19. Um, Really, they were shredding the air a lot by Preston Crum. I think he had three touchdowns um, in the air, which was shocking to see. Um, Utica Eisenhower just really dominated Clarkson that game. I mean, I was just shocked how dominant they were. I mean, just really shocked that Utica Eisenhower just really went in, you know, with confidence, um, brewing, and then they just they just went and beat Clarkson. Um, so. That's something to really watch for when you look at what Clarkston is. You know, that that's just a tough circumstance going forward. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens going forward with Clarkston. Um, but bottom line with Clarkston, they are in some trouble. I mean, defensively last three weeks, 102 points allowed. That's not good. I mean, that is not good. In three weeks, that that is over 25 a game. That's not good if you're um, Coach Justin Pintar. You gotta address that defense quick. I know, I know they miss Adam Denver. That's a big loss for them there. But still, you know, I mean, like, you know, especially in that secondary. I mean, like, you know, they haven't been the same team since that Lake Orion game. So we'll see what happens there in that one going forward there. And then you had the game down in Celine. You had Lake Orion 38, 35, Celine 28. Crazy game there. I mean, Lake Orion just looked horrendous in the first half. I mean, like, C.J. Carr had had a field day, I think, 230, two, 228 yards, two touchdowns. Um, You know, just, I mean, like, just he had a touchdown that one. Just shocked how he shredded Lake Orion's defense the way he did, Um, especially the run defense, which has been really good all year long. Um, You know, they got, they got two big plays off the air because they got to respect Carr's um, passing ability, and especially, he made some crazy throws in that game. He really did. Um, but Lake Orion, you know, they battled back, battled back, battled back. I mean, never gave in. I mean, Billy Roberson had a touchdown. He lost a fumble, but he didn't let it bother him. And Will Hoffman ended up kicking a field goal, so Lake Orion was only down 21-13 at the half. And then Celine scored again. You know, actually, and then Lake Orion scored again, got it within two, thanks to Billy Roberson. And then Celine went down and scored um, with C.J. Carr running it for a touchdown. And then Lake Orion just really took over after that, um, and leading to the touchdown by Raymond Payne um, in the fourth quarter. Um, people are going to question, of course, the field goal, obviously, attempt from Chris Bell. Um, if With Lake Orion riding offensively, going all momentum. I'll be mean, honest, I thought that was the right call to go for the field goal. Um but hop and missed it wide right. Um, but um, but Lake Orion's defense shut down T.J. Carr and got the ball up 29, which was a Raven Payne's touchdown. And then the defense really stepped up um, late and got and picked off T.J. Carr. Um, that says a lot um, when you look at what the Dragons have been through. Um, obviously, you got to give um, Lake Orion defensive coordinator Rick Powell a lot of credit. This is a guy that's been really ridiculed the last two years. I remember the 2019 team, and that team was really good. The last two years, that defense has not been, you know, has not been very good. But, you know, you kind of look at the circumstances. And then this year for the Dragons, you know, they've been really good this year on that side of the ball. Um, I think staying healthy has been key for them. Um, but also, I think the play of, um, you know, having experience back there in the secondary has really helped them. Um, I think having, I think when you look at the Dragons, um, I think they're going to be fine. I mean, you know, with the way that that team's been all year long, I mean, they've been resilient all year. They've been playing great football all year long. Um, it's been like a good scenario for the Dragons, the way they've been playing. Um, you know, and I think honestly, you know, when you look at Lake Orion, um, 
you know, they, they have the makings. They remind me of, they have a little bit of the, of the 10 team, the 12 team, bit of the 05 team, um, bit of the 06 team. I know this has been the fifth time that this team has finished the year. This program has finished the year undefeated. Um, going nine and zero. Um, so when you look at Lake Orion coach Chris Bell's team, a lot of confidence. I mean, you got a quarterback who can throw it and run it. You got a proven running back in Billy Roberson, Raymond Payne at wide receiver, Dominic Novak. Um, at times he can be he can be used as a weapon. Then the defense obviously has been nasty. When you look at um, I really think Ryan McCartan's really played well at defensive line. Um, I think Caden DeGreffin reads KD. Um, your secondary, Trey Pacmara, Andrew Parker, um, Austin Kahn, um, and of course, AJ Lights. He's, they've had some really, they've been playing really well lately. Um, you know, and then you look at, and they got depth there on the defensive in the secondary as well. I mean, so when you look at Lake Orion right now, the way that team's playing, that's a scary group right now when you look at it here. Um, that team could be in. That team can make a serious run. So, and to beat a team like Celine, who has got a very good, got a Northern commit in CJ Carr, um, Dylan Bateman to Louisville. He's going to Louisville next year at wide and um, tight end. Um, to hold them to this seven points in the second half and hold CJ Carr to four for 12 for 32 yards and two interceptions in the second half. That says a lot, you know, give credit to Coach Rick Powell and his defensive staff for knowing that they're doing that. And he did and they did a really good job at defense side of the football. So credit what credit's due for Lake Orion. Um going down, it's not easy going down the Celine and winning. I mean, you know, and that says a lot for that team, for that program. Um, especially hanging in the postseason. So we'll see what happens with Lake Orion as they um as the um you know, they head into the postseason um, starting up this week. So, a lot to look at um, heading into the postseason. Okay, now, let's talk postseason. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking about the playoffs. People have been talking about, you know what I mean, some of the matchups, some of the most unique matchups around the state. Um, you know, and I think we're going to go Division Four first because this is where Harper Woods is at. So when I look at my projections and I look at the projections, compare it to the um, compare it to where Dan Mache put Harper Woods. Um, I really thought Harp. I knew Harper Woods would get a home game. I thought they would go south. Um, with Detroit East English Village Prep. Um, I think they. I thought myself they would have went to go play Chelsea and all that. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Um, but they do got home field advantage, which helps them. So if they play a team like Goodrich in the regional final, um, then Goodrich would have to make the trip down to Harper Woods, play on that great turf. Um, Harper Woods, when you look at the Pioneers this year, and they've had a good, great year. I mean, six wins. Um, it was a great turnaround from two and seven last year, um, to six and three. Their three losses have been the very good teams. I mean, South at Arson Tech, who's in Division One, Groves, who's in Division Two, and then Lake Orion, who's in Division One. Um, Lake Orion, of course, has the most points in Division One, so we're going to talk Lake Orion in a little bit. But for Harper Woods, um, kind of was surprised where they were sent. Um, I didn't think that the MHA would send Harper Woods north, um, all the way to um. You know, to play Croswell Lex in the first round, which is a difficult matchup to say the least. Um, I think when you look at that matchup and you look at that game, and I think with Harper Woods, um, I think they got a good chance. But now you're taking on a team who's finished here at seven and two. Um, then on the other side, you're gonna have Madison Heights Lampier or Marine City you're dealing with. Marine City is undefeated. They went undefeated in the Blue Water Conference this year. <laughs> and then <coughs> Madison Heights Lampier, they're in the Mac, I think, Mac Gold. And, you know, we know Coach Roy Ozlerowski, he's done a nice job with that program ever since coming into Madison Heights. Um, so when you look at that matchup, when you look at the games between those teams, I mean, that district, and I think it's an interesting district because 
you look at Harper Woods, and, you know, they got all this proven talent. You got Nate Washoe, a quarterback. You got Stephon Buford, who can play anywhere, even quarterback as well. You have, you have um, Jacoby, um, Jacoby Bailey, who, um, or Kobe Bailey at running back. You have proven wide receivers. You have Dakota Gary at wide. Your defense has been really good all year long. And for Harper Woods to have the number one seed in Division Four makes a lot of sense. I mean, you don't have to see the defending state champion Grand Rapids Catholic Central until maybe the state final. I mean, pending if they get there. So when you look at Harper Woods' case, it's kind of a good draw for Coach Rob Oden. Um, but I was just surprised. I thought they would go more south instead of having to go north. But the good news for Harper Woods fans is all those teams have to go north, who are north, have to come south into Harper Woods in the Wayne County. For Croswell Lex, I mean, obviously for them, um, you got to take M25 down I-94 in Port Huron and then take I-94 down, you know, to get to Harper Woods. I mean, if that game's a Saturday game, it wouldn't surprise me at the Saturday game. But it also wouldn't surprise me they play Friday night because, you know, Croswell Lex, I know where Croswell Lex is up in Sanilac County. Really nice area, by the way. Um... You know, but I know Croswell Lex very well. And for them to have to go down there, I know a lot of people in Croswell Lex have to be very upset. And I know the analysts in Santa Lac County, um, I know the newspaper writers down there, they've got to be absolutely furious um, basically to see how, um, you know, they got to be furious. Just this same way right here. We finished year 7-2. and two. Now we got to go down to Harper Woods, who was 6-3, and three, played a more tougher schedule than us. And you got a Michigan commit in Jacob Oden there. Um, so difficult matchup for Harper Woods, to say the least, um, looking at it. And then you look at that region on the other side, the possibility of having to play Goodrich in the next round, that looks possible. Um, even though they got to play with Noble Brandon first, um, and then either, and then most likely in, in, an interesting matchup between Goodrich and Freeland could be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, in that one, um, or Hazlitt. So, you know, so when you look at that match and the situation there, I mean, for Harper Woods, you got it in the best of both worlds right now because all those teams, especially if it's Goodrich, they have to go down to Harper Woods. Um, a lot of those teams that they see in Division Four have to go down to Harper Woods. So for Harper Woods, you're kind of in that best best case scenario, you know, with the playoff games, the home games and all that. Um, I kind of thought they would have gone south to take on like um Detroit English East English Village Prep, Redford um Redford Union, um uh, but I guess the MHA really thought you know maybe it wasn't best for them to um send them south instead send them north, um where you're going up against a Croswell Lexington team who is physical, um tough as nails, and then the possibility of having to see either Marine City or uh, Marysville in the next round so. If you're at Harper Woods, it's going to be busy for them um, with the postseason, obviously. Um, a lot of confidence for Coach Rob Oden um, in that matchup against Croswell Lex. Um, obviously, Croswell Lex got a new coaching staff this year, but um, you know they've won seven games and just enough to get in the playoffs. So it'll be a fun matchup between the, um, both sets of pioneers, the Croswell Lex pioneers and the Harper Woods pioneers. So. Both teams, same name, pioneer name. So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's go to Division Three. Um, obviously this division's got me a little bit shocked a little bit because I was kind of surprised that that they would um they split up Wall Lake Western and Mason. Um, I thought Detroit Martin Luther King would go play Wall Lake Western, and Avondale would have been East, but instead Avondale went North. Um. Avondale now draws Holly in the first round. Um, I know Coach Billy Keenis really well. Dave Tooley, their defensive coordinator there. Um, Avondale under Coach Bob Meyer. Um, he's done a wonderful job in his first year there at Avondale. He has really turned that program into a wing T type scenario. That team's been very, very good. Um, I think with Avondale, really, um, I think the Yellow Jackets have a great opportunity ahead of them to really um, do some damage in the playoffs. I mean, they have a quarterback in Tyler Herzog. 
Um, they have a running, a good run, a great running back. They have a great, great receiving core. Um, I was kind of surprised that they put have. I mean, like it wasn't in their other realm of possibility to put Holly um in there. Um, just kind of surprised where they put. You know, I, I thought Holly would go with Linden, maybe Bay City Western, but instead they sentenced Linden to go play Mason the first round, which was it. That's ultimately a sentence. Um. Then on the flip side, you have, um, on the flip side, you have, um, you know, you have, um, you know, you look at it with Avondale, and then you have Wall Lake Western taking on Redford Thurston um, in the first round there, and you know Western's going to have no issue with them. Um, so I talked to Sean Cotter uh, of Wall Lake Western, obviously. He works at North Farmington as well for their boys' basketball program. But I said, you know, I was thinking to myself, okay, you know, Wall Lake Western, they got a great chance to do well in this district. But I told them, if there's one team that scares you, it's got to be Avondale. Because Avondale can match them. They can match them with the wing T. The wing T slows the, slows the game down, play very stout defensively. Um, and I think it's going to be a very interesting game. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, between the Yellow Jackets and the Warriors, if those two teams play. Now, Holly, they're a good team. I mean, I know Coach Billy Keenis really well. I know defensive coordinator Dave Tooley very well. I mean, I know what they, the players they have. They're going to work hard. They're going to fight. They're going to compete. Um, so it's not going to be an easy game for Avondale. really is not going to be an easy game for the Yellow Jackets. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um... I think it'll be a it'll be a war between two teams that you know they they do know each other quite well. They played three times. They played twice last year, uh, two times in the last two years. I mean, they played once in them. I mean, ha having won both meetings against Holly, um, so this will be really interesting. Um, wait, I think I think they split both meetings. I think they did so. I think either that or Holly won both meetings. So it's something I, I've got to look at my archives for that. But it'll be an interesting match today, at least between those two. And just imagine if Wall Lake Western and Avenue met in the district final. Um, would be a heck of a game between those two teams. Really would be. I mean, it really would be between those two teams. Um, and then we go to Division Two, And I think this is where I was going to be pretty much the most upset because last week we had a hell of a game between Groves and Seal. And that game was 21-14 in favor of Seaholm. Groves' lines were dominated by Seaholm in that game. You could just see the excitement of the Maples players. You know, they had the thunderstruck. You know, they had the lights dimming, you know, going in and out at times. You know how that is. Um... I'll tell you what, I absolutely love Seaholm's entrance. I, I mean, I love Seaholm's entrance. I saw that. Um, thank you to Jeff Corner, the D zone, for that. Um, and then you look at obviously the um, you look at of course the um, it's you look at of course what happened there, and that game really was a good denominator. Of, you know, of, of, of obviously the veer with Seaholm. Groves, he liked to throw the ball deep. Um, Caden Hardy threw a touchdown pass to his younger brother. Um, and that was a big play for Avondale. Um, and I think, honestly, when you look at the situation here, um, the Yellow Jackets, you know, when you look at the Maples, yeah, the Maples are in the lower division in the blue this year. But grow and growth played in the white this year, so it kind of surprised me, you know. So I thought, okay, Groves and Seaholm, whoever won that game was going to get a home game. Loser would have to go on the road. I thought Groves would play Waterford in the first round, and I thought Seaholm would play Lakeland. It geographically made sense, but the MHA said, "MHA decided, okay, let's put, um." Let's put Seaholm and Groves together. And let's put Livonia Franklin, who was a regional finalist last year, 
was knocked out by Groves in the regional final. And Water Vermont in addition. So I'm going like, wait a minute here. How does this make sense? How in the world does that make sense? If And I feel bad for Jim Dewall and Seaholm. Because he just beat your arch rival last week. And now I get to go play him again? Really? I mean, that's crazy. That's insane. The Battle of Birmingham Part 2. You know, yes, I you always expect Rose and Seaholm would play each other twice a year. You always would expect that. But not in like the first two weeks. How do you punish Groves considering that loss to Seaholm? How? How do you explain that? Groves has played a by far tougher schedule than Waterford Mott. How do you explain that? I would love to know Mark Eel's explanation about why in the, why in the world is Groves playing Seaholm and instead he put Waterford Mott. You award them with a home game. To me, Water for Mott doesn't deserve a home game. So you tell me that right now. Groves got robbed. And now they have to play their arch rival again. And I feel bad for Seal. Because I thought Seal was going to play Lakeland. I thought that. So now those two have to play each other again. In the first round. And Lavonia and Franklin goes and plays Water for Mott. That benefits Mott. Really did. So the MHA rewarded Water for Mott. They really did. Oh my goodness. I feel bad for the I feel bad for the kids at Birmingham Groves and Birmingham Seal. You know, I really feel bad for both those teams. Really do. I think those two schools deserve better. But now they got to play each other again in the first round. After playing last week in a game that was dominated, I thought, by Seaholm. So, that's my take on it. It's my rant of the week. Is why is Water Vermont rewarded a home game and not Groves? Groves has played a by far tougher schedule than Water Vermont. I mean, by far tougher. So, that's my take on that. Let's go to Division One. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech has a number one seed. I thought West Bloomfield would have a number one seed. Um, but a t has that, and they play Dearborn Fortson first. Um, and then that winner is either going to get Detroit Cast Tech or, um, or Westland John Glenn. Westland John Glenn's had a great year this year. They really have. But the loss to Novi really hurt them. I mean, it really did hurt them. Was that home loss to Novi. Because it kind of, you know, you kind of expected Novi, you know what I mean? You know, to go down the way. Now, John Glenn, yeah, they've had years of struggles. They've had years where they've really struggled. But they had a great year this year. I mean, the Patriots, they've had a great year. But... When you look at the schedule and you look at the district that they're in, you look at, of course, having to see Detroit Cast Tech, and they got a good quarterback, I think. And is it Corey Sadler's the quarterback there? Yep. And Sadler's played, has had a nice year for Detroit Cast Tech. He's had a really nice year quarterback. Um, I remember what he did against West Bloomfield last year in the um, first round. What he did to them was just insane. Um, so I think Sadler is going to have, um, you know, I think of a field day against Westland John Glenn. Um, and then on the other side, you got Southfield Arts and Tech taking on um, Dearborn Forts. And, of course, Dearborn Forts. And we know it under Coach Damon has been a, um, has been really good in the past few years. But this Forts and team, they've had some struggles this year. I mean, they've really had some struggles this year. Um and now you get to go play Southfield in the first round, who has a proven quarterback, proven wide receivers. Running game's been slowly improving. You're out, your lines have been getting better. Um, you're senior heavy on both sides of the ball. Um, it's an interesting matchup. 
really is. Um, so I think you're looking at it's gonna be very interesting how that one goes. Um, we'll see how that one really goes in that game between the um between the Warriors and the um, Tractors in that game over in um, Southfield. So something to really watch for in that game really is. Um, then we have West Bloomfield and Utica Eisenhower. Um, this one's gonna, the West Bloomfield and, um, Adams, my bad, I apologize there. Utica's playing Utica Eisenhower. Um, West Bloomfield's taking on Adams. Now, this was a kind of a shock to me that the MHA made this matchup. It's a week five match, it's a week five rematch after... Adams won, lost 36-32 to West Bloomfield in the Swamp in Week 5. Um, I talked to Kyler Kep of um, Civic Center TV about, I mean, like on a Sunday night, about, you know, about how, how much both these teams have improved. And I also think for Adams' case, Ryan Waters, has he improved? You know, last three weeks he's been playing really good football. I mean, ever since the loss to Lake Orion, he's really stepped up his game. Um, and then you look at, of course, um, you know, the play of Brady Prescott. You know he's playing with a heavy heart after um, what happened to his father, Jerry. Um, so, you know, he's playing with a heavy heart. Um, if you're West Bloomfield's defensive coordinator, this is an absolute nightmare for you because you're going against a team that runs a beer. You're taking on a team that really, you know, they're a team that really, um, you know, they really, um, Adams, of course, they run the veer. It's a tough offense to stop. Um, it's a difficult environment for, um, for, um, West Bloomfield, you know, considering, you know, how hard the veer is to stop. But I know West Bloomfield's got some defensive playmakers. You got Bryce Rowe there. Um, you got Brendan Davis Swain. Um, you got, um, Jimmy or Benjamin, um, but I think the linebacking core is going to face another tough test against a team that runs a beer. Very tough test. And then on Adams' side, defensively against West Bluebeal, you're dealing with Rick Nance. You're dealing with Marcus Morris. You're dealing with Elijah Durham. I mean, Josh Tate has really started to improve a little bit at running back. Um, you got Jalen Alos as well. So, they're going to have their hands full. That might be the best game of the district of the first round is Adams West Mubu. And then that winner is going to Swinehart. I mean, I don't see Utica upsetting Eisenhower. I'd be really shocked if that were the case. But I don't see it. The winner of that game is going to Swinehart. I'm already calling it right now. Is that game, you know, whoever wins that game goes to Swinehart, most likely. Plays the Utica Eisenhower team, has a proven quarterback in Preston Crum. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. So we'll see. And then you have Region 3. We're going to Region 3, District 2 first. Before we talk Region 3, District 1. Um, region 3, District 2, this one's interesting. Because, as a Region 3, District 1, this will be very interesting. Because you got Romeo against Clarkston in the first round. Romeo finished, both teams finished year 4 and 5, but they're heading in opposite directions. Clarkston's been heading in a downward trend lately. Romeo has been. Pretty, pretty, um, going up and down lately. Romeo's losses have been to some re very good teams. I mean, they lost to Caledonia. They lost to, um, Roseville. They've lost to Utica Eisenhower. Uh, no, actually, they beat Eisenhower, but lost to Chippewa Valley and Macomb, Dakota. So you lose, so, and you know the Mac Red is not a fun league to play against. So, Obviously, you're looking at a situation to where, um, you're looking at a situation to see where, um, you know, 
where Romeo is. Romeo's been rolling in the MAC red lately. They've been rolling. I mean, they had a good win against Grand Blank, 29-23 the other night. Um, went in the, it was at Romeo. So, looking at this matchup with Clarkston, you're going to say, oh, Clarkson, here's a team that's really struggled. They've lost three straight games. Yeah, that is true. They've lost three straight games. Um, But albeit to good competition. You know, Lake Orion, Harper Woods, and Utica Eisenhower are no easy teams. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, And then you look at on the other side of things, you have, and then you have, um, you know, and then, of course, Clarkson, we know they got Brady Collins at quarterback. You got Dez Stevens. You have Brody Cozen. Um, and then you have the Bowman twins, Griffin and Lucas. So I'm curious to see how the Bowman twins respond in the postseason. Curious to see how Clarkson's offensive line responds. But I'm also curious about that defense. Will Adam Denver be back? That's a big question. If he's back, that's going to help Clarkson. But I don't know if he'll be back. But for Clarkson to have a home game, they better be, they better be thinking they better be thinking of people. I personally thought Clarkson would get a home game regardless, but I thought they would play Grand Ledge or Grand Blake. But unfortunately, the MHA thought, you know, maybe, you know, maybe going like a north east west direction when it comes to this district. So it's an interesting matchup, interesting storyline between Romeo and Clarkson, because both teams know each other quite well. And that should be a fun one, to say the least. And then there's Lake Orion and Oxford. Battle of them 24. I'm not sure if the double O is on the line again in this game. I don't think it is, because it's a postseason game. But I don't know. But Oxford getting in the playoffs, winning three straight games, behind the play of Luke Johnson, their offensive line. Jack Hendricks has, had, has been really good lately, too, for Oxford. Um, taking on a Lake Orion team that really has improved. You know, when you look at, of course, their defense. Yes, they had that big win against Celine where they gave up 28 points. But I think their defense is much better than people think. And I don't know how Oxford can have an answer really ropes. I just don't know how. Um, if you're Coach Jack Line, you know what I mean? You know, I'm curious to see what game plan he's going to have for Lake Orion's ground attack. Um, particularly, um, T.R. Hill, and then Billy Roberson. Very curious to see how that one goes. But also the shades of 2021 ringers in this game because I remember Clarkson coming in 7-2, and two, taking on Oxford. Um, we had a 5-4 record. Um, and Oxford went in there and just destroyed Clarkson. And I, and that was that was the game where Tate Mir made his um, famous interview to Jeff Corrin to the D-Zone. So... And I talked to Coach Line about um, before the season started, you know, on the podcast about um, he said that there were some similar traits to the 2021 team with this Oxford team. And he's right. There is. But when you look at Lake Orion's team, there's some similar traits to the 10 team, to the 12 team, some of the 05 team. Um, I think they got those three elements. Gritty. I mean, physical, this should be an interesting game. I know it's a rematch of a 38-13 Lake Orion win, 38-14 Lake Orion win. Let's not forget Oxford had the lead twice on, in that game early against Lake Orion. If it comes down to a death game, it's going to be all she wrote, and I think it could be. So, we'll see what happens there. I mean, it should be a very interesting game between the Wildcats and the Dragons. It always is. It's like the Battle of the Hatfields and McCoys when the Wildcats and Dragons get together and they play um, football, especially these two rivals um, on a Friday night over um, in Lake Orion. So I know ONT TV will have that game for sure. Um, Dragon Broadcasting will also have that game as well. Um, let's do my projections here for the, um, for the games this week. Um, obviously, Harper Woods taking on Croswell Lex. Um, this is an interesting match, to say the least, between those two teams. Um, Crosswell Lex are going to like to run the ball. Um, they do have some balance. They will throw it at times. But I think Harper Woods has got enough athletes to really create some havoc. And I think they're going to wear down Crosswell Lex. 
um, in this game. So I'm going to take Harper Woods um, to move on um, to the um, semi to the um, district final and meet, I think, Marine City. And that would be a really interesting game between the Mariners and the um, Pioneers um, in the district final. Um, an undefeated team taking on a 6-3 and three team who's played a tougher schedule, um, which I think that will be a really interesting game. So I'm going to take um, – Harper Woods, they're going to move on in that game. I think it'll be an interesting game to see at least between those two teams. Um, Division three, we got Avondale taking on Holly. I think this is going to be a tight game for maybe about a half. But I think Avondale with the wing T, um, I think they're going to be a difference in that one. Um, the misdirection, I think, is going to be a difference maker there. I think Avondale wins this game. Um, maybe by two scores, maybe three scores um, over at Dick Five Field. Um, I just think Avondale, the way that they're playing right now, they're clicking on all cylinders, especially what they did against Warren Fitzgerald, winning 50-20 to 20 in that game. And I forgot to mention that one, too. I mean, like, Avondale really dominated that game against Warren Fitzgerald. So with apologies to Coach Bob Meyer, you know what I mean, earlier on the podcast. So I do owe him an apology for that. So, But I got Avondale. Playing more, I mean, but I had um, I got Avondale knocking off Holly in the first round. I think the Yellow Jackets will win that one um pretty convincingly, um, and I think they're going to move on and play Wall Lake Western in the um, district finals. Um, so that'll be a real interesting matchup between the Yellow Jackets and the um, in the Warriors if those two teams were to play over in Wall Lake. So something to really watch for going forward there. Um, with Avondale and um, Wald Lake, um, Avondale and Holly this week. So, something to really watch for there in that one. Um, Division two, Groves against Seaholm. Last week, these two teams played. It was 21 14 in favor of Seaholm over Groves. Um, I'm curious to see the adjustments that Coach Brennan Flirty's made. Um, I think this is going to be a tight game, I think it's gonna be a close game. But I just think it's going to be the same result. I think Seaholm wins this one because of the physicality up front. Unless Groves has a game plan to really address the line up front. Now, obviously, Groves is Avery Gock, who is, um, you know, we know what he's more capable of. But he didn't show up last week against um, Seaholm, it looked like. Um, but I just think Seaholm with the veer, it kind of makes up for it. The Kinney brothers, I think, are going to have a big game, both of them. I think Kyle Robbins is a big game. Um, obviously, Groves and Seaholm, that rivalry, that's like the Hatfields and McCoys of Birmingham. You know, the Battle of Birmingham Part 2. So, I think that's going to be an interesting game. Um, I, I really like the Maples in this one to win over the Falcons. Um, but I think it's going to be a tighter game. I think more of like a 24-20 game instead of like a 20-14 game. But if it goes the other way around, you know, girl, it wouldn't surprise me if girls wins this one. But I'm looking at this game right now. I got Seaholm winning this one over a very good Groves team um, heading in that matchup there. All right, let's go to Division One now. Um, got Stafford Arts and Tech taking on them. Dearborn Fortson. Um, this game, I think, is going to be over by the end of the first quarter here. I just think Stafford Arts and Tech wins this game pretty convincingly. I think Isaiah Marshall is going to have a big one. I think the Warriors will probably get maybe around 35 by by halftime. Um, I mean, if Fortson keeps it close, I'd be really shocked here. But I just think the Warriors, the way that they're playing, um, their high-octane offense, I think they're going to get the job done. And I think they're going to play Detroit Cast Tech because of, I think Sadler's the difference in that game. I think he's going to have a big game against Westland John Glenn. Um, just an absolute terrible matchup for the Warriors. Um, no, for the Patriots, again, playing the um, technicians in the first round. Um, it'll be a tough matchup for Westland John Glenn, but I just think at the end of the day, I'm going to take um, I'm gonna take um, Detroit Cast Tech, and I see a, a final between Safford Arts and Tech and Detroit Cast Tech. Um, and then you have West Bloomfield and Adams. Like I said, the winner's going to likely take on Utica Eisenhower. Um, I like West Bloom in this one. I just think that the Lakers... Um, have enough offensive weapons. The firepower's there. Um, Adams, Brady Prescore, and obviously I think it's, it's going to be a tight game like it was back in week five. I just think at the end of the day here, 
I'm going to take the um, Lakers over the Highlanders here, and I think it's going to be an interesting game, to say the least, something to keep a close eye on in this matchup, to say the least, between those two teams. And then you have Romeo and Clarkston. Um, I got to apologize to my Wolves friends here. I got Romeo in this one. Romeo's played a tougher schedule. Um, I just think Romeo has got enough weapons here to hold Death Stevens in check. Um, I just think that, um, you know, and I, 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 Clarkson, the way that the team's been playing defensively scares me. Um, I, I just think that the, um, the Bulldogs are coming in with nothing to lose, everything to gain. Um, I like the Bulldogs in this one to knock off the Wolves, um, just because the way Clarkson's been struggling. Um, so we'll see what happens there in that one. And then you have Lake Warrior and Oxford. Um, I think Oxford keeps this close for a half. I really do. I mean, but I mean, like obviously play Luke Johnson, their their offensive line. Um, you know, I think they're going to give the Dragons a scare. But I think in the second half, like Orion pulls away here, and I really like. I think behind the play of Billy Roberson, T.R. Hill. Um, I think the Dragons, the way they played against Celine, um, I think they're going to find a way and win this game. Um, you know, I think you know 38-13-14 last meeting between those two teams. I think it could be worse, but we'll see. I mean. It'll be an interesting match, to say the least, for sure, between the Dragons and the Wildcats. It always has been. Um, Ox, we know about the 2021 upset they had with Clarkston. Um, and, you know, it could happen, but I just don't see it. So I'm going to take Lake Ori in this game um, to knock Oxford off. I, I just think the Dragons find a way to win this game So and move on to the next round. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, we're signing off here. I have the volleyball districts up on the blog at Sangre Bay 4650 at com. Also, we have the, um, you know, we have my projections that were forming my projections. Um, we have the um, my postseason thoughts of each team. Um, also, the recaps as well on the blog. Well, also, in the soccer regional previews as well, of course, we have Adams taking on, um, Adams taking on Troy Athens and um, Adam Troy. And then also Oxford taking on Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, so you can take a look at my blog at set and Blue Bay Hills is also playing as well in there. Um, also take a look at my blog at Sangre Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for all that, everything, all the latest information around the OA. So awesome. Congratulations to Blue Bay Hills is um, tennis team and awesome. Congratulations to Adams girls golf team for being a state champions for, um, girls 10 for boys, tennis and girls golf respectively. So good seasons to both teams. Giving the OA the first two state championships of the season. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care, and I'll see you next week.